Thanks, Rich Tarani with TMC Net. We are here in uh, Silicon Valley, uh, Santa Clara to be specific. It's our Editor's Week where we talk to some of the best and brightest companies out here. And Sushil Kumar is with us, and uh, he is with Robin. And I failed to mention it's uh, 2016, so uh, more specifically November 2016. So welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me here. Uh, Likewise, we're thrilled to have you. I was hoping you can start at the top. Tell us a little bit about your company. Sure. So, uh, you know, Richard, we are reinventing the infrastructure. And that's a very bloated term, so I like to break into the pieces, but that's no different way to say that. For the longest time, infrastructure is always about how to make hardware work better, right? But the whole world of application, the workload that runs on infrastructure has been completely detached. Um, and while there is a lot of talk about software-defined infrastructure, how we can create a scale-out uh, uh, you know, layer, which um, you know, improves efficiency and gives agility, the life for application owners and application developers have not changed. In fact, it's getting worse as the applications are becoming more distributed and they deal with a lot of data. So at Robin, simply what we're doing is we're creating an application-centric software-defined infrastructure. So the concept are the same, which is we take a bunch of commodity servers. We aggregate resources, both compute and storage resources. But one of the main difference between us compared to everybody else out there is we have application intelligence built into our infrastructure. So contrast that with how you do it with traditional infrastructure. If you have an application, you dismember into VMs and storage volumes, and then you feed these things to the infrastructure. But the infrastructure itself doesn't understand that all of these are the different pieces of the same puzzle. Contrast that with Robin. In Robin, what we allow people is to describe the whole application as an application manifest. And that's the payload that gets deployed on the infrastructure. The benefits, even the most complex application like Hadoop or Cassandra or even your homegrown application, you don't have to spend days and months trying to deploy it. You can deploy it literally in a minute. But not just that, now that we have application intelligence inside the infrastructure, the life cycle of application also becomes easy. So if you need to scale something up, you, in one click you can add more nodes to a cluster. If you need to create a copy of the same application for test and dev purpose, you don't have to go and figure out which VMs and which storage volume needs to be cloned. We know it all, so in one click you can have a full clone of application. So with this application centricity, you get simplicity of application management. Uh, one of the other things that we do is we can run each application with a predictable quality of service. So while virtualization has been great for a number of reasons, one of the big challenges that people are dealing with is the noisy neighbor problem. And as a result, people are hesitant to put their mission critical, business critical application like databases on these infrastructure. We completely eliminate that trade-off. Because we can run each applications, and because we use containers, we run without any hypervisor overhead. We wall each application into its own uh, area, so each application is guaranteed performance. So you have simplicity, you have better quality of service, and because we leverage containers, we also maximize the hardware utilization. So you have better return of investment, you have faster time to market, and you have better customer service. So it's really like just next generation um, data center design. Yes, yes. It's, it's really. And in fact, you know, our tagline is forget software defined data center, how about application defined data center? Makes a lot of sense. Okay, fantastic. So, um, how far along are you in terms of deployments and, and that sort of thing? Uh, so, we have been around almost for three years now. Uh, we came out the stealth mode at Strata, which is a big data conference earlier this year. We have paying customers. Uh, we are a net revenue generating company. Uh, we have GA product out there. So we are out there, uh, you, know, Great. you know, selling the product. Fantastic. Are there any um, success stories that you can tell us in terms of like how you've you've made um, the life easier for your customers? Absolutely. So, okay. Great. A uh, couple of examples. There is a big retailer, and very soon we'll be, you know, able to share the name publicly. Okay. But they are one of the big retailer. I'm pretty sure we have been to their store. Okay. Um, they had uh, uh, this personalization engine for their website. Right. Um, uh, that you know, as you can imagine, everybody is trying to compete with likes of Amazon by giving you personalized offer. And uh, all of us, you know, are very pleasantly surprised when we go to this website and see an offer just for us. And we we just 
are sometimes surprised, how did they know? Uh -huh. Well, there's a lot of number crunching that happens behind the scenes. Sure. So uh, the latency is important and how quickly you can harness that data is important. Sure. So here was a customer that was looking to uh, virtualize uh, this application that feeds all the personalization information, okay. uh, but was running into all sorts of problems running on the virtualized infrastructure. Performance was slow, the performance was unpredictable. Uh, they were dealing with a lot of problem in terms of managing all these distributed applications. Uh, so Rob, in Robin, they found a perfect choice. Uh, here, uh, now they are able to virtualize that very highly you know, data intensive application without any performance overhead. But in that process, they have presently discovered how simple it is to now run these distributed applications like oh, Hadoop and HBase. So that's, that's one good example. There is another uh, financial services com it, um, from based out of Texas. Um, they are one of the top five insurance provider in America. And uh, they were running their, this, uh, this application, which is supposed to be real time. In real time, it's supposed to ingest security event for fraud detection. Right. And again, before Robin came along, they were running on virtualized infrastructure. Um, they had almost 20 minutes lag in terms of how fast they were able to process that data. Right. And it may seem like a trivial problem in 20 minutes, but when you're dealing with real time information, you know, uh, you have to do fraud detection, and sure. if you have to, in security, 20 minutes is an eternity, right? Sure. So uh, once they moved to Robin, they have been able to completely eliminate that backlog, and presently for them now, they are running the same workload on a much smaller hardware footprint. So they gain, the return of investments has improved, the performance quality of service has improved, and they are now deploying almost all their data-heavy applications on the Robin platform. How, okay, so how does Robin allow you to, okay, so that sounds almost counterintuitive, right? That your Robin is, is allowing you to have less hardware, so how, or, or less powerful hardware. How, how does that work exactly? Where, what, what are you taking out? Um, so one of the things is we leverage containers, um, and what happens is, uh, you know, when we leverage containers, Think of containers. So you're, you can put, okay, so I'm going to try to yeah. phrase it and you tell me if I'm right. right. So basically you take the, the important applications or the ones that are low latency and you kind of prioritize them and the things that aren't as, so you take your processes that aren't as important and you just let them run in a slower mode, more or less. Because uh, they're not as important, they're not mission critical. Yeah, so uh, partially true. But uh, here is how, we, how it works. Uh, one is that, you know, because we have designed these applications for very data intensive application where IOs are important, sure. we primarily leverage containers to virtualize the compute side. Okay. So the difference between containers and the traditional hypervisor is in hypervisor you have two layers of operating system. There's a guest operating system, and then hypervisor itself is an operating system. So there is there's a significant number of IO overhead, right? The latency overhead. Because we leverage containers, we get rid of that. So that's one big benefit. And because in containers, the operating system is shared, on the same physical hardware, we are able to pack a lot more workload, right? That virtualization cannot do. Um, so we are able to pack more. We remove IO latency problem. And the third thing that we do is, uh, in along the lines of what you just said, because we are application aware, we have an intelligent way of prioritizing IOs, which basically sure. means that your high priority applications will never be impacted by a low priority sure. application waking up all it's of like Almost like MPLS for, for applications. Yeah, something like that, right. Okay. right. So you are able to pack more um, and okay. get predictable performance and you know, get better performance. Yes. Great, so well, what do we miss? Did we leave anything out? Uh, no, I, I, I think you know, I think the main point um, that I like to reiterate is you know, a lot of people, you know, there are a lot of hype about containers these days, right? And in last 10 minutes you have seen me talking about containers only two times. And the reason is containers are the means to an end, right? right? And what we are doing actually at Robin is essentially taking the infrastructure evolution to the next logical step is, look, we have gone from the hardware-defined data center, which is clunk, uh, clunky, old, inefficient, and then we saw virtualization taking it to a software-defined infrastructure. We are actually unveiling the next logical step is saying software-defined is good, but it's all about infrastructure, whereas the world of future, whether you talk about digital innovation, transformation, is all about application and data. And we are creating an intelligent infrastructure that can deal with, that is application aware, deal with highest performing applications, and truly helps you not just save money and save, you know, uh, simplify your IT operation, 
but they make the life of application developers and application owner and business users better. And that's exactly what I should do. Fantastic. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Richard.